What I want to talk about just now is two different approaches, strategies, outlooks on LinkedIn that can help you grow your audience, nurture your audience, and convert your audience. So, Stephen, what is the tattoo I've got in the back of my leg? A lighthouse. A lighthouse. Why have I got a lighthouse in the back of my leg? Why have I got a lighthouse as a painting? It was actually in that office, now it's in my home, right? What is the deal with the lighthouse? Well, I remember hearing a story years ago about the tugboat and the lighthouse. And the idea was that a tugboat requires power, manpower, energy, fuel, a lot of graft, a lot of work to keep ships safe. What does a lighthouse do? It also serves a similar purpose, but it just stands strong and shines its light. Now, most people, when it comes to LinkedIn, they are tugboats. They're pushing and pulling and grafting and pitching and persuading. The amount of times I go to my LinkedIn inbox, and it is an absolute lot of shite in that inbox. It's like, oh, hello, Mr. Farrow. Um, it's wonderful to see that you've spent this many years in your industry. Would you be open to having a conversation about, no, delete. Or you're going and it'll be this fucking 10 page pitch of utter bullshit, right? And a lot of these things are um, automatically generated, put out via AI and robots and all the rest of it, just spam, right? There's no filtering, there's no targeting, it's just noise that pushes into the market, right? Now, are people going to feel loved when you send them that sort of stuff? No. See, for me, what matters more is relevancy. It's knowing who you're talking to, right? And that's a conversation about LinkedIn for another day. Targeting based on who you're actually talking to and providing a real solution to their problems. But if we put that to the side right now, most folk on LinkedIn are tugboats in the way that they poorly promote themselves. And you have to ask some of these people, how often does this actually work? Because if Joe Bloggs comes into my inbox and he's pitching me and spamming me, I'm going numb to Joe Bloggs. I'm no following Joe Bloggs. I don't care what he's saying. He's already turned me off because he's telling me that he's playing the game at an amateur level. Whereas the opposite approach, instead of pitching and pushing and going online and posting on your timeline of your feeds, buy my shit, buy my shit, buy my shit. Instead of doing that, what we do is we're the lighthouse. So what does the lighthouse do? Now this is the first part of the strategy here, right? Uh, part one is to be the lighthouse. Part two is what happens when people come back to your profile. And I'll cover these fairly quickly, just for the sake of being concise. So being the lighthouse to me is standing tall and shining your light. There's a guy I've followed for years called Jay Abraham. Jay Abraham teaches something called the strategy of preeminence. The idea behind this is for you to know your market, love your market, and serve your market before money ever changes hands. To give great content, to give guidance, to give support, to give value to your marketplace and to become a real beacon to that marketplace before they ever pay you. Now, some people say, well, why would I give away all my best stuff? I see you nodding, um, before they ever pay me. Because if that's how good your free stuff is, imagine what it's like working with you, right? When COVID kicked off, and uh, we all went into lockdown a few years ago. I remember there's so much uncertainty in the world. People didn't know what was going on. And as a business owner, I'm looking at the landscape and thinking, how are we going to survive? Like, at the time, I was heavily involved in an events-based business. And I thought, how are we going to run an in-person events-based business when you're not allowed to be around other human beings? So I started looking to different people online who might be able to give good advice. And there was one person that stood out in particular. And he was sharing what he thought might be the changes in the business landscape. He was sharing what he thought might be good ideas and things to think about. And he was a really good commentator on what was going on. And I locked in to this guy's message. Think about it, whenever you're looking for advice on any subject, you find somebody that resonates with you, who talks sense, who's given value, and you lock in on their message. Is that fair? Richard, Crystal, for example. You love the guy's message. You know, you've got the t-shirt with him on it and everything else. And you watch for what he puts out. There's another market over the years that I absolutely love this guy's content. So now when he puts out anything, I buy it. I don't even need to know what it is. I know that he's awesome and I'm buying. It's crazy, absolutely nuts. 
But this is the effect you can have when you lead by value. So being a lighthouse to me on LinkedIn is the opposite of being a tugboat. You're not pitching and pushing and pulling and harassing. What you're doing is you're leading, you're giving value, and you're being the first thought in people's minds when they think of what it is that you offer. And that's key. Now, we can talk about this more in another session, but let's shift on to the next part. So here you're being the lighthouse over here. You're sharing value, you're sharing content, you're talking about industry-specific uh, information, you are sharing things that are going on in your industry, you're doing it for a place of interest, you're doing it on the go, taking people on the journey, and also sharing things about your own thoughts and insights on life and business. You are using LinkedIn as your personal family WhatsApp chat. You know, when you go to your family WhatsApp chat, do you sit and think about how you need to edit this message before you post it? Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Trust the copywriter, right? Well, you've got a lot to worry about though, so, you know. So when you go to your family LinkedIn chat, nine times out of 10, generally speaking, if you're not a total deviant, um, what you'll do is you'll take that message and you'll share it. You'll take a picture, you'll share it. You'll post a video, you'll share it. You'll share a few thoughts, bang, put it in the chat. Right, you don't really filter or think about it. We start to treat LinkedIn like a personal blog. We're supporting the industry. We're leading, we're taking control. We're putting ourselves on a self-built pedestal and saying, here I am, I want to help. So while that's going on, how do you actually get business for that? Now, the first thing to think about is that when you are leading from this approach, people can see that. And you do start to become the first thought in people's minds when they think about what you do or they think about somebody in your industry, or because you're generally talking business, they start to resonate with you. And even if you're a, a plumber, but you're sharing insights on business and day-to-day -day operations, people know who you are, they know you're a plumber, and you become the first thought in their mind, right? So that's one aspect to it. That's how you convert, because people will come to you. The lighthouse attracts, it pulls people in. It's visible for every angle, but, when people get to your profile, which is the second part of the story, what do they then see? So you could be a great industry commentator. You could be sharing great value. But when they get to your profile, what's actually there? Is it a shitty looking cheap profile where you've got no descriptions on the things you've actually done? You know, is it really crappy little headlines? Director, who cares? You know, call handler, who gives a shit? Rework it. Imagine your profile is like a brochure that's selling you to the world. How would you market yourself? What would you put in there? Don't you answer this, Tom. What would you put in that profile to really make people think, wow, they're awesome. I like to think it like, imagine a CV, right? A lot of people do the tugboat approach with CVs. They've got a general one size fits all CV and they send it to a hundred employers and wonder why no one responds, right? How about looking at the actual employer that you're targeting, reworking your CV a little bit to fit that employer, and then sending it directly to them. So with your LinkedIn profile, just like a CV, you wouldn't have a cheap, nasty looking CV. You put a bit of thought in it. You put a bit of effort in it. You make sure it reads well and comes across well. Is that fair? So if your LinkedIn profile can be likened to that, how can you really make that profile sing? And how can you target at a specific pocket of the market so that people see you, you're visible, you're there, you're the first thought in their head when they think of what you offer. And then when they come to your profile, everything about it just backs it up. Does that make sense? And the final little thing I'll, I'll put on this is when it comes to LinkedIn, stay in one lane. And what I mean when I say that is it's quite common, particularly in the world of property, for example, to go on LinkedIn and you'll see property investor, company director, crypto investments, uh, and part-time janitor. And it's like, well, what one are you? I'm gonna go with the janitor one, right? But what one are you? You know, what is it you do? Because people want to work with specialists rather than generalists. If you're a generalist, generalists think that by saying, I do all these things, that they are gonna get more business. But what you're actually saying is I don't specialize in any one of these things. I do loads of stuff, come and use me, right? A specialist narrows their focus and says, here is what I do, high level. Specialists get to charge more money. Specialists command the actual pocket, the market that are looking for exactly what they offer. 
and specialists get inquiries for everything else anyway. People will come to specialists for the things they specialise in and everything else that they do. Whereas if you put yourself out as a generalist, very few people will come to you for anything. So we build the audience by being the lighthouse, by choosing to share value and look after your market before money ever changes hands. We make sure that that profile is absolutely bulletproof and really positions you to serve that pocket of the market that you're specialising in and to really sell you to that marketplace. So there you go. Any thoughts or questions on this before we move on? Cool. Happy. Brad, that's it. Cut at that point.